Hey guys, welcome back to Shop Life. Today we're going to be doing a video like I did uh, earlier, like for the general maintenance, where I covered most of the oil leaks and any other fluids that you had to change. But this time we're going to be doing it regarding the suspension, uh, anything that's related to suspension, and anything else that I can show you guys while I have the car in the lift. So the car that we're demonstrating on today is my girlfriend's car. It's a 2001 BMW 325i. Uh, we bought it for $2,000 with 204,000 miles. We bought it approximately four months ago. Yeah, about, about three or four months ago. And the only thing we've done ever since we got it was an oil change and the filter, of course. And then we also changed the valve cover gasket and the spark plugs. And the main reason I had done all that was because we drove this car all the way from North Carolina to California, uh, along with this box truck that's on this side as well. So we drove those two uh, cars here together. And this car didn't have any problems beside it was vapor, uh, it was vapor locking and it also had a few problems with it starting to overheat. And that was mainly because of the high temperatures while we were driving here. So besides that, we really haven't done anything on the car. It's got 215,000 miles on it now. Uh, yeah, we drive a lot and the cross country trip didn't really help with keeping the miles low. But we bought this car to drive. But for today, what I'm gonna be doing is I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys where all the bushings are, what bushings go bad, and what you should be checking for when you're underneath the car. And the main reason I have it on the lift is because I have a lift, first of all, and it's easier for me to show you guys all the stuff with it being this high. You can do everything that I'm about to show you guys, uh, even having to replace them if you're gonna do it yourself. You can do all this with just jack stands and a jack, as long as you have some kind of solid ground. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, so this is the first time, like I said, that I'm actually underneath the car. I did have it on ramps to do the oil change, but besides that, I really haven't seen underneath this car. So let's go ahead and dive into it. So this right here is the front of the car. Uh, as you can see, I already have done the electric fan conversion on and that was just so that way, if I had to do anything while we were driving cross country, it would be easier for me to just remove the Torx bolts to pull the electric fan out rather than having to deal with the fan clutch tool. So this is an automatic. So let's go ahead and continue on. We have the sway bar right here. And as you can see, I have a couple of oil leaks going on over here. Uh, I'm pretty sure the oil filter housing might be leaking as well as the oil pan gasket, especially with this kind of mileage. Most of all the oil leaks are occurring right now. So this is the power steering rack right here. And this is where you'll have some play in your steering and even some knocking if you're going over bumps. And that's because of the tie rods. So the inner tie rod goes straight into the rack. And this is right here. And then the outer tie rod, what do you call it, threads. The outer tie rod threads onto the inner tie rod. So the outer tie rod, the easiest way to check is to actually look on the steering knuckle itself. And there's a bushing, well, it's a ball joint pretty much, that's in between this nut and the steering knuckle where it attaches. So what you could do, if you have a pry bar, you could pry on it if you're trying to track down some kind of noise. Uh, this one is not bad, even the boot is not that cracked or anything. So this one's still okay. For the inner tie rod, what you would have to do is you have to remove this boot and also remove, well, you, you can probably do it without removing this outer tie rod, but just remove this and check for play. It's gonna have a little bit of play, that's normal, but if, if it's doing a lot, if it's moving a lot, that means you need to replace that as well. And that's the same goes on this side as well. Now we have the control arm itself. So the control arm has two ball joints and then it has a control arm bushing. So one ball joint goes to the steering knuckle and the other ball joint goes to the subframe itself. And both of those ball joints, if you have a stock control arm, they are not serviceable. So you would have to replace the whole control arm. And then the bushing goes right here underneath this metal plate. And this bushing is also fine. If it wasn't, what you could do is you can grab the wheel and wiggle it back and forth at nine and three. Try to wiggle it and if it moves around, that means that the control arm bushing is bad. Another test you can do is without jacking it up, you can drive the car very slowly on just some even ground and then have someone outside uh, watch while you step on the brake. And if you're stepping on the brake and the wheel is moving uh, side to side, well, if you're looking at it from sideways, if the wheel is moving this way back and forth, that means your control arm bushing is bad. And that will cause you to have uh, like, you know, play in the steering while you're driving you're also gonna have vibrations and you're gonna have a lot of knocking when you're driving down the road and going over bumps. Another thing that will cause knocking in the front or clunking as you might wanna call it is the sway bar link. So a sway bar link attaches this sway bar to the actual strut assembly. And if this one has a bad ball joint, 
then it's going to be knocking whenever you go slowly over bumps. And this can also cause a little bit of vibration in the steering as well. And you also have this sway bar bushing itself. This is what attaches the sway bar to the chassis and it's held in with these two 13 millimeter nuts and this metal clamp. So this bushing, if it goes bad, you're also going to have knocking. And what usually happens if you try to update these arms, so you can get like uh, Turner Motorsports sway bars and what they do is they make your handling a little bit better. But when you do that, you also end up putting more stress on these mounts and the mounts tend to tear out from right here. And if that does happen, you can literally, you can just drill out all these spot welds and replace that section. But if you're just gonna have a stock, uh, st uh, if you're just gonna have a stock sway bar, you really don't have to worry about that. So let's continue going further down. Uh, what you're gonna see next is, this is not really the suspension related, but since I'm down here, I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys. Let me grab the light. All right, so what I'm showing you guys right now is the engine mount, which is right here. And pretty much what happens is the engine mount, when it goes bad, whenever you're idling, you're gonna have a vibration in the cabin. When you're at a stoplight, you'll feel the car shaking a little bit. Not like a misfire, but more like a vibration. And if you turn your AC on, it's gonna get worse. And that means that your engine mounts are bad. And to change those, you have to lift the engine up off of the subframe, and you have to undo both mounts and replace them. You gotta have at least six to seven inches of clearance to get them out. So you can use some kind of engine hoist to lift up the engine from the actual engine bay itself. Or they actually make a bar where, uh, even Harbor Freight sells it, that attaches to the top fender rails and you just chain the engine onto there and it'll lift up the engine without having to use the hoist or anything and you can take the whole subframe off. If you're going to be doing the engine mounts or anything that requires taking the subframe off, I highly suggest you replace all your suspension components because that's the easiest time to do it. The components are really not that expensive if you're going to try to stay with stock and OEM like. If you're gonna go performance, of course they're gonna be a little bit more expensive, but stock stuff, I mean, you can get the whole suspension kit, control arms, tie rods, inner tie rods, uh, control arm bushings, the engine mounts, and even the sway bar links and all that, probably for around like six to $700 for just stock stuff. And I mean, it's gonna be aftermarket, but it's gonna be stock quality. So it's nothing like polyurethane bushings or nothing like that, just stock rubber components. But yeah, so those were the engine mounts. Uh, let's go ahead and keep going further back. Now what we have here is the transmission. The transmission also has mounts. Uh, they're rubber mounts from factory. And these, you really won't really feel any kind of vibration with it. But if you're gonna be doing the engine mounts, I suggest you do the transmission mounts as well. A quick and easy way to check if they're bad, if they're sagging a lot, or if they have any like tears and they're like sheared off, because that tends to happen as well. Especially if your car has been in a wreck, that can happen any, with any, like, any kind of front end or rear end collision. So, that's, a, uh, that's the transmission mounts. Now we have the Guibo, which is which the drive shaft attaches to, and that attaches to the transmission. So this is the Guibo, and without taking the exhaust off or this heat shield, you should be able to see if it's cracked and if it has any kind of hairs sticking out. If it has hair sticking out, that means it's too far gone and you need to replace it right away. And another thing that will tell you that is when you're driving at highway speeds or even at low, low speeds, you'll hear like a little clunking coming from the middle of the car, or you'll feel some kind of vibration when you're going at like about 45 and up. You'll feel some vibrations. So that could be your guibo, or it could be your center support bearing, uh, which is in the middle of the drive shaft. In order for me to show that, I have to take off this exhaust and this heat shield, but it's probably about right here. And that pretty much centers the drive shaft, and, it, and it, it's like a circular bushing. That way it uh, centers it and it makes sure it's, there's no wobble in it. Uh, the drive shaft also has problems with the U-joint, which is all the way in the back, which we're going to next. So here's the U-joint right here. If the U-joint is bad, you'll have some kind of like resistance and it'll be binding and that can also cause vibrations. So you can actually have the, the back half of the drive shaft rebuilt by a re, uh, like a rebuilder. But with that, you can't really just take it to anybody because a lot of people really don't know what they're doing. I don't know how to do anything with the U-joint. I'm pretty sure it's not serviceable like that. You, you can probably cut it off and put a different U-joint on it, but I don't think you can just take this out and replace it. Correct me if I'm wrong, if any of you guys know, but I'm pretty sure you can't. But the center support bearing and the Guibo, that's another part of the drive shaft that you should service as soon as you feel any kind of vibration that's not related to the front suspension. Now that we're in the back of the car, we have the whole rear suspension assembly. So right here we have the camera arms right here. 
and we have the trailing arms right here. So here's a trailing arm bushing, one of them that goes bad. And when, th when this goes bad, you'll have uh, toe wear on your tires and you'll have trouble aligning them because they, they, just won't allow, uh, they just won't align right. And then whenever you step, like accelerate really, really hard, you'll feel the back of the car trying to turn whichever way the trailing arm bushing is bad. So if that happens, that means you need to replace those. And whenever you're dealing with anything on the rear suspension, what I suggest is if one thing is bad, it's time to pretty much just do it all because it's gonna be a lot easier for you to take off this whole suspension, the rear suspension with the differential and all of that, and just replace everything all at once, especially if you plan on keeping the car. So this right here is the drive shaft, and the drive shaft has the bushing, which is known for the clunk. So whenever you put the car, if this automatic, if you put it in reverse, or if you put it into drive, uh, you'll hear a clunk, like almost like a thud that comes from the back of the car. And that's almost common on all E46s. And sometimes even replacing the drive shaft bushings won't get rid of it. But if you replace the bushings, you're gonna have more life out of your guibo and your center support bearing because the drive shaft won't be moving around whenever you're going and switching between gears. So whenever you do the drive shaft, I suggest you go ahead and replace the subframe bushings, which are right here. There's four of them. They're actually in the subframe carrier itself, which means that you have to pull the whole subframe off. I know you can do it by just lowering it a couple inches, but that's just a lot more hard work than just pulling it off and doing it. So there's the other two on this side, one right here and one right here. So the back, the back two mounts are bolted in and the front two mounts have nuts. So there's actually a bolt that goes all the way through the chassis and that also tends to tear out. That's what, that's what the famous subframe tears are about. And I'll show you guys how to, how to pretty much diagnose that on a separate video. Uh, I mean, it's, you, the easiest way to diagnose it is to pull everything off, of course. That way you can get an actual good look and see how bad if it is torn. Most of these are not gonna be torn unless they're early models. So like 99, 2000, they have the most problems. And especially if the car is driven hard, it increases the chances of the subframe tearing out. What you can do is you can reinforce it. If you're gonna be doing your rear suspension, might as well get the reinforcement plates. You do not have to get them welded in. You can actually epoxy them in, and that you could do at home, even if you don't know how to weld or whatever. You just get the epoxy, and you just epoxy all the plates in, and then you're good to go. You can also get the little foam that goes in from the inside. It's structure foam that will pretty much solidify everything, and that way it will prevent it from tearing out. So let's continue on with the rear suspension. What you have right here are the spring perches, and this is the rear springs. These are the rear shocks. And you have the, like I said, the camber arm, you have a bushing right here. And you have a bushing inside of the arm itself that goes to the carrier. And then you have the subframe mounts and the differential, the back differential bushing, which is right here. And then you have the sway bar, this really skinny sway bar. You have the rear bushing right here, which attaches to the carrier. And you have the other bushing which attaches to the actual spring perch, and this is the actual bar. Those are the sway bar bushings and sway bar links. They usually, like even if they were bad, you won't really notice it as much since it is in the back of the car, and since it is so small. Another common issue with the E46s, uh, once you get above 100,000 miles, sometimes less, I mean this is actually with any car, are the wheel bearings. So the wheel bearings, whenever they go bad, you're gonna have more resistance for the car to push forward and you're gonna hear like a noise when you're going at slow speeds with your radio off, even if you have your windows down, you'll hear like a bearing noise that's like you could tell that there's something wrong. And that could be the rear bushings, I mean the rear bearings, or even the front wheel bearings. The front wheel bearings are easy to replace because they're just bolted in, and then you can just use a slide hammer and pull them out. The rear wheel bearings, they tend to be a pain because you have to remove the axle, and depending on where you live, sometimes the axle welds itself to the hub because of rust and whatnot. And if that happens, your only way to get it off is to use a really big hammer or take it to a shop and have them press it out. For that, if you're living in one of the northern uh, areas where they salt their roads a lot and stuff, I highly suggest you get a shop to do your rear wheel bearings because that's just gonna save you a lot of time and hassle. So that's pretty much it for the suspension wise. Uh, 
that I'm pretty much covered most of the basics of the suspension, where all the bushings are, and what usually tends to go bad. If you guys have any questions, feel free to leave a comment down below. If I missed anything, you guys also comment that down below and I'll add it to the description or whatever. Uh, one other thing, the E46 that you have, if it has over 80 to 90,000 miles, even if your suspension feels good, I suggest that at least you check everything out, make sure everything is good. It's better to catch some things and replace them before they go bad. If one of your bushings is bad, it's gonna cause other items to fail prematurely as well. So you wanna make sure everything's in tip top condition. And the main thing that's overlooked usually is the struts and the shocks. I've seen some fail as early as 50,000 miles. So I suggest you pretty much just change them every 60 to 70K. And you can also get coilovers, lowering springs. If you get lowering springs, you have to get aftermarket performance struts and shocks as well. So keep that in mind. And that's it for this video, guys. Stay tuned for the next video. And thanks for watching.